Welcome to the Mindset Game Podcast. I'm your host, Vered Kogan, and I'm very excited to have Riley Jarvis with us today. Riley is a certified sleep science coach and functional diagnostic nutritionist, as well as being DNA Fit certified. He is the founder and CEO of the sleepconsultant.com, which is an organization that helps corporate leaders, entrepreneurs, and high performers transform their sleep to significantly boost their productivity, mindset, and energy levels. And I imagine that all of you are probably eager to hear what he has to say so that you can boost your own productivity, mindset, and energy levels. Certainly, we can use more of that these days. Welcome, welcome, Riley. So wonderful to have you. Thank you so much, Barrett. It's amazing to be on the show. So would you be willing to share with us a little bit about your story? How did you get into this arena of sleep? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a really interesting one. Um, So my journey started about 10 years ago. I was going through my later years of university and I, I took finance in school. That was really my specialty. And in the finance world, they're kind of, it's a hustle culture. So it's, it's sleep less to get ahead, burn the candle from both ends. If you feel sleep, if you feel tired, you just drink coffee and you get on with it. So I was surrounded in this environment for a really long time. Um, then it began to really burn me out. And I was seeing colleagues of mine, my bosses, and they were just making just careless mistakes. And I could tell it was just because they weren't sleeping well. Some of them slept even in their office overnight. So sometimes it wasn't, uh, you could tell by bags under their eyes, they weren't the happiest of people at at times. So there was this piece that I saw. It was just, it it was opening my eyes to to seeing what's sort of wrong with our, with the, the existing model of sleep. So it planted the seed in me thinking people really need to start improving their health. But was interesting is around the same time, I started experiencing health issues. I was tired all the time. I was getting stomach issues. Um, Brain fog was constant, was constant. And eventually I had to drop out of my job. I just, I couldn't function anymore. It was really hard for me to to even get out of bed. Foods I was eating was just, was just putting me uh, KO'd pretty much. So what I had to do was go see doctors. Um, long story short, they diagnosed me with Crohn's disease and I had to have multiple hospital visits and the side effects of the medication that I was taking were really not helping me whatsoever. In fact, they were making me feel worse. They're making me gain weight, feel puffy. Um, digestion was worse. So the people that I relied on, I, doctors are amazing. They see, save people's lives. But for me, I, I had to really take health into my own hands. And this is where I spent tens of thousands of dollars on doctors, flew around the world, did all that, became certified in the process and literally over seven years, um, took health into my own hands and healed my Crohn's essentially. So for over the last five years, it's been in 100% remission. It's pretty funny when you see other doctors, they say, I don't even have it. So it's, it's pretty amazing when you're able to, you know, see the matrix in a way and, and do it through your own, through your own means and and navigating this journey yourself. So now I empower other people and help them not necessarily who are, who are on the extreme end. Like I was that my story is really to just empower people that if I can do it, then you absolutely can do it as well. Ah, Thank you for sharing that. First of all, it's a reminder that sometimes the painful things in our life, those things that we wouldn't necessarily welcome, Um, are the very things that guide us to our higher purpose, if you will. Absolutely, for sure. And I honor you for taking ownership of your health and being curious to explore different modalities and and what Mm -hmm. might help and then expanding that beyond just a self, right? So you figured out some things that worked for you and you Mm -hmm. wanted to help other people. And that's a, a beautiful thing. Exactly. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. It's been, uh, it's really impactful. It, it's definitely meaningful to, to help other people as well. So since this is a podcast about mindset, about mm-hmm. our belief systems, you know, essentially how our inner world creates our outer world. Yeah. How do you think that our mindsets, even the unconscious ones that we're just not mm-hmm. even aware of, influence yeah. our sleep and specifically maybe even zooming into uh, high performers such as yourself that mm-hmm. is really busy. There's so much to do. Mm-hmm. You know, they just, you know, don't have the time to get the sleep yeah. that they need. Yeah, absolutely. So the one thing with high performers is sometimes they just don't have time to work on themselves. They're just such in a go-go state that they put everything under the rug 
And then when it comes out is when they, they go to sleep and they have their head on, on their pillow and their, their minds are racing of just everything that they have to do before they go to sleep and they can't get to sleep. And then they wake up in the middle of the night, three, 4 AM, and they can't fall back to sleep because then they think about thinking and just nothing works anymore. So the mindset piece, there's so many different elements that you can combine when it comes to sleep. But in my opinion, after working with tons and tons of clients, the mindset piece is the most important when it comes to it. And it's one of the easiest that you can change. And it just takes a little bit of work, but with consistency within days, even weeks, you can make a massive transformations in how you feel. So one of the biggest parts is just during your waking hours, what are you doing maybe as your evening routine, your morning routine to not only prepare you for the day ahead. So you're not having all these negative thoughts come up, but what are you doing in your evening routine? So you can really calm your mind down. So when you, you do go to bed and go to sleep, everything is, let's say you're getting just tens, dozens of thoughts that are automatically coming up with things you have to do. You just don't have that anymore. And your baseline state is just in a place where it's just empty. It's just positive thoughts. And you're just presently in the moment. It's so much easier to be there in, in this effortless state, um, just through a lot of these different modalities you can do. So one of the biggest you can do is before you go to bed is journaling. So really brain dumping and writing everything down in a journal, maybe five, 10 minutes prior to sleep. And one of the biggest reasons for that is because uh, we wake up a lot of the time in the, in the middle of the night, because during REM sleep, which is one of the deepest forms of sleep, our brain does a lot of processing of the day before, or just a lot of these unconscious patterns that we may not, uh, which don't make any sense to us. Um, but if we were, if we were to brain dump that onto a journal prior to sleep, then our brain won't be processing that during sleep. And we can actually sleep a lot deeper into the night. So that's a really big piece. It's all about the routines, making it consistent, but also thinking too, what, what are empowering beliefs that you can hold inside of you? Because just like you said, your inner world creates your outer world. And when you're able to have an empowering inner world to create that empowering outer world, then that then it goes full circle to have that empowering world again is so much easier because everything around you is just that much more empowering. So it could take on many forms, but for a lot of people that I work with, it's, it's just a place where life just becomes so much more effortless because especially for these high performers and optimizers, they, every single minute counts for them. Sometimes every single hour counts and for them to be able to do deep work without distraction, especially for those who may not be working a lot of hours during the day, but for those that one decision can make the difference between tens of thousands or millions of dollars. Those are really important for you to do that. And when you manage people, emotional intelligence, these relationships, it all comes into sleep. And when we're, when our mind is fully recharged, when we're fully rejuvenated, our body's working properly, our mind's working properly, we can just function at our best self. And that's what I call version U 2.0. So that's where um, for high performance, especially you're dealing with extreme, extreme optimization for these kind of individuals. And this is where every single piece counts compared to somebody, maybe in my early stages where it's uh, it was in a disease state for me to just get back to baseline. Yeah, it did require some work, but when you really get to that optimization level, you really have to have everything on point. And that's where, when you know what to do, instead of guessing, we're able to set a baseline test, not guess, then you can just get to that result a lot of the time so much faster. So it can be a great place to be. <laughs> It, it it can be because as you said it's like a it's like an engine it drives even you know when you're in that optimized state even better thoughts and better yeah. emotions and then you know you're able to take actions that will lead to more of those aligned thoughts and emotions and so on and so forth mm -hmm. and one of the things that came to mind as you shared that is this concept of return on investment yeah um you know the whole idea of self-care you know pausing mm -hmm. throughout the day to self-regulate our state or to journal at night or to meditate or to sometimes work out or even just go outside and enjoy nature for a few mm -hmm. moments the sometimes the perception is when i have so much stuff to do mm -hmm. that the return on investment is not as much when i'm working with myself because i really yeah. need to do all that stuff for mm -hmm. other people so how how can we shift that mindset um, mm -hmm. of putting ourselves first? Yeah, that's a really good question. And that's one of the biggest things with high achievers that you have to decondition them on those old beliefs. And it's definitely one that I came from of sleep less to get ahead. 
And a lot of people say, well, I'll sleep when I de- I'm dead because I just want to achieve whatever I can right now. So one of the, one of the biggest things that people have to realize is if you prioritize yourself uh, first and it's all about getting a taste of what does that feel like? And it's almost like when you start going to the gym for the first time and you get addicted to that feeling, instead of getting addicted to that downward cycle, it's getting addicted to that upward cycle. And you're seeing what the benefit, what the benefits are from that. So, so if you're getting a really good sleep, maybe it's just you allocate one night. Okay. I'm going to follow today to a T to ensure that I get a really great sleep tonight. And then once you do it, you wake up the next day, you're like, wow, I feel so much more recharged compared to what I normally feel. And now you get a taste of what this new normal feels like. And now you want to make it your regular normal. And so you want to do whatever you can to get there. So for a lot of people, it's just getting a taste of it, see what it feels like. And then you can start making it more consistent. And then you get to a point where you don't want to go back to that old normal. It's just this new normal is so much better. And when you're right, the ROI is so much it's so much higher compared to burning the candle from both ends, having to work, work, work. Um, when your mind's at half of its capacity, I mean, sometimes like 40, 50% of what it is capable of versus some people are able to achieve an eight hour work day in only four hours because they can just focus so much uh, during those four hours. And then they have the rest of the day free to do what they want to do. So it could be another venture, time with their fa- friends, time with their family, hobbies they've been putting off for a long time. So people don't realize it. Um, and I think it's just education through the podcast that we're doing here. I think soon people will start to realize it, but I'm glad that people are becoming more aware of it. And as you know, the research is validating that when we are mm-hmm. more coherent and a big part of that is getting good sleep, good quality Absolutely. sleep, that yeah. we are more productive. We yeah. you know, have less of those you know, thoughts in the back of our mind that just deplete our energy. We're able to make decisions more quickly. We're able to mm. take action on mm. things. And so, and of course, to access, you know, our intuitive guidance that will also help us to achieve things, uh, you know, with much more ease, you know, that when we do that, we are um, really setting ourselves for success. So it's like, mm-hmm you know, as you said, changing the down cycle to an upward cycle and really getting a feel of that an experience of that to say, wow, I actually was much more productive today. Yeah, exactly. I spent 10 minutes to meditate or, you know, I spot checked my emotions and did a kind of shift and reset, maybe like a quick coherence technique a few times throughout the day. But boy, did I get more done today? It's like the famous quote, you know, that, uh, I mean, I, I'm trying to think who said it. Was it Gandhi? I can't remember that said, I have so much to do today that I need to meditate twice as much. Yeah, that's just it. You, you, you have to think of it as if, if the bad's pushing on you from one side, you got to push from the other side with the same amount of good. And if not more, so you cancel out whatever that bad is. So interpret it however you want, but it's kind of a cool visualization exercise. You know, you think. How can I, whatever is stopping me, how can I introduce more of this good thing? So the bad thing, I mean, it'll always be there, but if you can minimize it as much as possible, that's, yeah, it's, it's really good. Would you be willing to share with us a little bit about the mind-body connection? I know you're a mm-hmm. nutritionist, so how does our gut health and other things impact our sleep? Um, yeah. You know, would you be willing to kind of give us some guidance, maybe some tips on how to improve that? Absolutely. Yeah. So what a lot of people don't realize is our gut, many people think that our minds are mine, our, our minds inside of our brain, which is just above our neck. And then our gut is a few feet down. Um, you, you know, and, and it's something that, uh, it's so important because our gut is actually known as our second brain. And the reason is, is it can function independently from our brain versus our other organs rely on our brain to, to actually work, for example, our heart, heart and things like that. And inside of our gut is where about 90% of our melatonin or our uh, serotonin is, which is our feel good hormone for us to feel relaxed, which is so, so important for our brain um, to, before we go to bed. So we don't have these racing thoughts. Um, it, it just goes on and on from there. But the other thing is too, is our gut and our brain are connected through something known as our vagus nerve. And our vagus nerve in Latin is known as the wandering nerve. And it's a, it's a nerve that it's really long and attaches to all these different areas inside of our body, all of our organs and our gut too. And it, it's for people to feel viscerally what that feels like. It's, it's when you have butterflies in your stomach 
it's that feeling. And it's not just in your head, it's an actual sensation that happens. And this is sort of on the forefront of science right now. And they're really making more discoveries about it. And it's amazing how, when we have negative thoughts, it negatively affects our stomach, which leads to low stomach acid. So we can't break down the nutrients of the food that we're eating, even though it's healthy foods. So we don't get the right nutrients for our brain or transmitters to make it. So we focus and have relaxation in the day and be our best self. So all these different systems in our body are interconnected, um, to make us feel like our, like our best self and stomach is definitely one of the most important. There's other things in your stomach. Uh, parasites can be a big one. Um, leaky gut is a big thing. A lot of people eat foods and, um, a lot of these, um, big food particles actually leak through the line to our bloodstream. Our body detects that as a foreign invader and then inflammation comes in and then we feel brain fog and it just goes on and on from there. But, uh, from a high level layman terms of view, that's what it, what it looks like. And so thank you for sharing that. And so how does that then impact our sleep and what can we do? Um, mm -hmm. Maybe just even a tip or two uh, mm -hmm. with regards to our nutrition to have a healthier yeah. gut. Definitely. So one of the biggest ones is eating foods that are not inflammatory. So this is, people have heard it before, but you want to eat whole foods. So this is things not when you look at the box at the ingredients and you see 15 things that you cannot pronounce the name of, you want to eat whole food. So if it's, I usually separate it into your protein, you have your carbohydrates, you have your fats and you have your spice. And with each meal, you want to add one of each. So with your protein, it might be, for example, a steak. And then for your carbohydrates, it could be vegetables. It could be a sweet potato. And then for your uh, fat, it could be an avocado or oil or some kind of nuts. And then for your spice, it could be whatever you want to put on it to make it, to make it good. And it's not about following a diet, three teaspoons of this, so many cups of this and making it complicated. Cause that's what causes people to fall off. It's all about a template and systemizing it for people. So it's simple. So my one thing is uh, low inflammatory foods, uh, making sure that those foods are whole. That's number one, for sure. Um, the other one too, is believe it or not, is just being adequately hydrated because we need enough water inside of our body for us to assimilate, um, a lot of these nutrients, um, inside of our stomach. So we're not dehydrated. Um, it, it helps with a lot of other functions too, inside of our body. But if we're dehydrated, our brain's not going to work as well. And we're going to get more prone to anxiety and a lot of these other negative things that we just don't want. So from a high level view, liquids, lots of water, you want half of your body weight in ounces. That's kind of the rule of thumb and then really wholesome foods. Um, usually a, a paleo template is what I tell people. And then working down from there, sometimes people will have autoimmunity to certain issues, um, eggs and foods and stuff like that. But that's where you, you go deeper down the rabbit hole, but just for most people, whole foods is, is really, really where it's at. And as they say, food is medicine. And there's actually departments at Harvard university, um, studying how food as a medicine actually impacts our body and brain. So in the years to come, and there'll be a lot more about it. Thank you. And I'm curious about genetics. Yeah. What are genetics and maybe natural sleep cycles, you know, how do they impact sleep and what, if anything, can we do about that? Yeah, it was a really good question. So our genetics definitely play a role in how we sleep, but it's not our genetic destiny. And a lot of people feel like when we're, when we're born with like, let's say an unlucky roll of dice, when it comes to our genes, that that's sort of, that we're, there's nothing we can do about it. It's our destiny. Uh, we just have to live with it and cope with it, but it's not actually the case. And the reason is, is because genetics load the gun. This is sort of the analogy, but our environment pulls the trigger. And so what that means is we can be born with poor genetics, but if we have an environment, so this environment could be positive thoughts or negative thoughts, good foods or bad foods, or it could be uh, low exercise, um, not great exercise or plenty of exercise and our sleep atmosphere and everything else, we can have the right genes express themselves. And then we can have the genes that are not that, that we don't want to express. So that could be cancer, obesity, brain fog, things like that, not express ourselves. So we, we can really navigate our way around this. Um, so it's, it's really good how we can, how we can manage it that way. But some people genetically are either a morning lark. So they're more morning type people, or they're more evening type people. And this goes into things such as chronotype, your sleep animal sign, um, how sensitive we are, for example, to caffeine. Some people can drink 
coffee literally at 8 p.m. and they'll be fine. Those are more the exception to the case. They're more rare. Other people want to drink uh, their last cup of coffee by like eight hours before bed on average. So it really just depends. So there's such a genetic diversity. Um, I would say the biggest part that genetics plays when it comes to sleep is if you're more of a morning person or an afternoon person, everything else we can really custom tailor to your environment. Um, so you get the most optimization in your day. Also too, with your, with your genetics, um, you can find really what your key time is. So based on, I usually look at genetic reports with clients, but we can see, okay, is your most optimal time to work 10 AM to 12 PM, or is it more of the window from let's say 4 PM to 8 PM? And a lot of people have a mismatch. A lot of people are night owls when they're actually getting all their work done in the morning and they're not getting their best uh, functionality in the day. So if we can customize a tailored approach for people, we can make it so we have an alignment between what they're genetically best hardwired to do with, in addition to their environment. So let's say if they're a morning lark, we get their most um, high, high, high productivities during those hours and they're cruising throughout the day. And they're usually done their work by work day by 12 PM. They have the afternoon and evening free. Oh, that's so awesome because you're touching on kind of natural rhythms. We all have kind of yeah. rhythms and cycles. And when we can you know, optimize, if you will, by being aware of that and leveraging that, we can mm -hmm. certainly have less resistance. It's yeah. like, you know, having certain personality preferences and aligning yeah. our life with that rather than going against the current. Exactly. And I, and I honor you for sharing the power of thought and the power of environment, right? Environment has mm -hmm. many different components, including what we eat and and so on. But a big part of that is our thoughts. Mm -hmm. um, you know how that impacts the body and of course our sleep and great research yeah. on the biology of beliefs of course by dr bruce lipton and other yeah. genetics and so you know you brought up the topic of coffee yeah <laughs> you know, and one of the and you have a new client who i spoke with yesterday owns multiple companies very uh -huh. very much a high performer but struggling with sleep and <laughs> you know and a lot of stress of course there's also some things under the surface there around uh, appreciating himself, really being able to take the acknowledgement of others, feeling guilty mm -hmm. when he's not showing up a certain way uh, mm -hmm. because he's burnt out, you know, with his teams. So there's there's a lot of mental, emotional stuff, right, that, that's going mm -hmm. on. Um, and he drinks four cups of coffee a oh, day wow. at least. Yeah. So, you know, it's like, what, first of all, what is your take on coffee? And, uh, and also, what do we do when it's just like so stressful for mm -hmm. us to manage all the stuff we need to manage? And, yeah. it's, you know, it feels almost impossible to be able to just let it go. Yeah. And that's that's a really hard thing for people, because if they just let the coffee go and let a lot of these habits go, they start to develop headaches, all these withdrawal symptoms, and they feel worse than they before. It's like, why would they do if they're going to be getting withdrawal symptoms for maybe a couple of weeks on end when they have all these things to do? So it can be a vicious cycle for a lot of people. So firstly, what I think of caffeine coffee, it's really good. I mean, the science shows it's got all these antioxidant benefits. Uh, it's really anti-cancer. Um, it makes us think, it keeps us alert. And I think that's really good for about 90% of people if it's in the right way. But of course, every, every, the, the poison's in the dose and everything should be in moderation. So everybody's different again for genetics. It really depends. Sometimes people need lots of coffee. Other people are more sensitive to, to coffee. I'm very sensitive to coffee. So I save a little bit of money on it because I just need a few sips and I'm good to go for the day. But um, the way that I would do it is this. So it's better to have a little bit of coffee and a, a small spurts throughout the day versus all at once. And the reason is because if we have too much at once, it's going to spike our cortisol, which is our stress hormone. Not a bad thing. It's just, if it's too much, then it, it can't be good. And it's going to cause us that which comes up must come down. So it's going to cause us to crash and we need another one because we're too tired, especially people who have the afternoon slump after they eat uh, lunch, heavy carbohydrates, especially if they're eating lots of bread and high glycemic foods, spike their blood sugar, spike their cortisol, and it's just going to come tumbling down afterwards. So I would normally structure my day like this is first of all, for a morning routine, 
you wake up, um, when we sleep, we lose on average one liter of water just from our breath alone when we sleep. So naturally when we wake up, we're going to be dehydrated. But what most people do is as soon as they wake up, they go for coffee. Well, coffee dehydrates us because it's a diuretic. So what we want to do instead is drink as soon as we wake up is drink one liter of water. And then the other thing is, it was first thing when we wake up, our cortisol is at its highest point. And this is important because this is when we have our most amount of energy. And most people, what they do is when their cortisol is at its highest and they have their most energy in the day, they have their coffee and they dehydrate themselves, which is not a good thing. So what you want to do is first thing you wake up, drink a liter of water, wait 90 minutes. Cause that'll be when your cortisol will start to come down. And now you can give it a little bit of this boost with coffee, not too much. And people can drink it. However, they like uh, people who are sensitive to coffee going for alternatives like green tea, different forms of tea that have caffeine inside of it. Dark chocolate's another really good one, um, can be a really good alternative too, but it is tough. So going back to the question, what do people do when they're kind of in this vicious cycle and they can go through withdrawal symptoms? Well, the trick is this, it's, it's case by case for every individual, but what you really want to focus on is making it easy for you and also dedicating a period of time to yourself where it's like, this is me time. And you keep in mind, this is only going to last a couple of weeks. And then after that, I'm going to be in automation mode where life is just easier. I can just go back to what it felt like maybe 10, 20, 30 years ago. Um, just have so much energy. Um, so what people sometimes do is they allocate it with vacation. Uh, maybe they wake up a little bit earlier and they have some time to themselves or for the weekend, instead of watching TV all day or having a lot of obligations with their family, just whatever it is, they really take time to actively recover. And this is another really good point too, is you really want to maximize your time when you do have time off and time to yourself, make that active recovery. So your body fully recovers versus passive recovery, where you just maybe sit down and watch Netflix right after you get back from work for three or four hours and your body is still in the state. And then you have, you know, ice cream or sugary things for dessert. And then this causes you to sleep poorly. So other things of, of actively recovering yourself are things that we've talked about. So this could be journaling. This could be Epsom salt bass. This could be yoga. This could be like a light jog. This could be a guided meditation where we really focus on mindsets and beliefs, but it can also be throughout the day too, where we just take a pause. We feel a little bit stressed, focus on the breath catch ourselves with the thoughts and we become the watcher of our thoughts. And then we just kind of let it go. And then we go throughout our day. So it's, it's not necessarily an event. And this is where people don't do it because they make it event. They make it this big deal and they just don't end up doing it where you should make it more of a, just a thing you do and make it become a lifestyle and make it these micro commitments throughout the day. And that way it's so much easier for your brain to stick to that habit. I think they say on average, it takes 31 days for us to integrate a habit inside of us. So if, if we just stick to it, put as, as l- the lowest amount of pressure on ourselves as possible um, and make it work for us, similar to the diet, make it simple. Don't make it complex. And if we mess up, that's fine. I mean, it's, it's, everybody we're human beings. It's, it's inevitably going to happen, but if we just go to our own rhythm and we honor our rhythm where we are, and then we just go day by day, we know we're going to get to that goal. Then inevitably those results will come. Thank you for simplifying it, giving giving permission for it to be really that simple. Those Mm -hmm. micro actions that we take that accumulate over time. And when we have consistency, you know, there's momentum, right? Because yeah. we start to feel better and then that makes us want it even more. Mm-hmm. And then of course the actions can also get bigger and bigger, uh, mm-hmm. but starting simple and small is something that seems to create less resistance, less of a mountain, yes. if you will, for us to, yeah. to cross before we can feel the re- results. Are there any recommendations for breath work or meditations? anything mm-hmm. like that, that, that you use with clients or perhaps yourself that can mm-hmm. really help us to ease into sleep and, and get better quality sleep. Absolutely. So for people that are first getting into meditation, guided meditation is sometimes the best way to do it. Um, if we just focus on our breath or our mind or our thoughts are going to get in the way versus if we have something to focus onto and it's somebody's natural calming breath and their presence that we hear it's it's similar to a bell and we can focus our attention outside of our body and our mind onto something external while they guide us through and they're professionals and they do it in great ways so one of a really good resource that's free for people to to go to that's one of my favorites 
They're called um, in YouTube. If you just put in the honest guys, they have a variety of meditations. Um, really, really good voice. I get more compliments um, from this referral um, recommendation than a lot. So that's one um, guided meditation. I would do first, ideally they've done scientific studies. 20 minutes seems to be where the most benefit is, but not everybody can just sit and meditate for that period of time. So starting off with one minute, again, just working up 20 minutes is usually a great place to be. After that is um, an app on your phone actually is called brain.fm. And what this is, is it sends brain, um, it makes, it sends frequencies into your brain and it's all safe and it's, it, it's scientifically proven and it'll put your brain into a sleep state and into a meditative state, into a focus state, into a creative state, really whatever you want. And you need to wear headphones for this, but uh, really you can do it wherever you want, wherever you are on the go. Um, so that's a really good one. Other ones too, you can look into is uh, getting a bit more geeky, but you can focus on something known as heart rate variability. So there's a company called heart math and they have um, something known as the M wave two and all these other gadgets. Yeah. So clips to your ear and you play games. So it's known as biofeedback. So depending on what your heart rate is and what your breathing is um, you, you basically play a game and you can see how, how in rhythm your heart rate and your breathing are together. And the, what they call is coherence. The more coherent it is, the more you're going to feel uh, a great sense of well-being and not be as stressed. Because if you think about it, when we do get stressed, our breath shallows, we have negative thoughts and things become out of whack. And what's really cool with this is if you feel a negative thought rising, you'll actually see your score start going down on the technology, uh, which is kind of scary the first time. It's like it's reading your, your body in real time. So that's one. Um, other quick ones people can do if they want to invest more in neural feedback is a good one for the mind. Um, but other tools you can use, um, especially with the unconscious mind, there's things known as havening, tapping, you know, known as emotional freedom technique. Um, there's EMDR, which is a lot of things with your eyes. Um, the unconscious mind is very important. Then we have the, have the conscious mind too, but from a high level view, this is just really good things to get started with. Yeah. Thank you for bringing those up. I am familiar and havening in particular, what it does is that when we use the gentle touch to the face, the kind of mm -hmm. shoulders and arms and the palms of our hands, we actually get Delta electrical mm -hmm. signals going up to our amygdala, which is very soothing, right? Delta is just like yeah. sleep. So, uh, you know, a lot of times when we use havening, we get sleepy, right? So that's a yeah. really good thing to do before bed, Absolutely. Uh, especially when we uh, perhaps also include uh, some emotions, right? So as we say things like, I feel stressed, or there's so yeah. much to do, or, you know, as we self haven, then the body mm. kind of tends to feel calmer and, yeah. and allows that processing, just like, as you said, with journaling. Yes. Yeah? So yeah. We're, we're letting that energy be expressed, but at the same mm -hmm. time, soothing ourselves. And of course, EFT tapping is wonderful yeah. for sleep as, as our other modalities. Exactly. So Riley, you have shared such a wealth of, helpful information, simple, practical tips for all, for all of us to uh, really uh, consistently apply in our life to get mm -hmm. better sleep. Is there anything else that you think is important for our listeners before we complete to, to either be aware of or to, to practice in order to get even better results? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I really just what I really want people to emphasize on is it's not just one thing. It's not one pill that you take that you're going to sleep. You're going to sleep well. And that's kind of the conventional, the model. I mean, you go to your doctor, you can't sleep well. He, he checks off your symptoms inside of his boxes. And again, doctors are amazing, but for a lot of people, it's, it's the end of the road for people. And what are they going to do? Take these, these sleeping pills for the rest of their lives. That's got its side effects too. Um, at the same time we have society in general, sleep less to get ahead, more coffee, put things under the rug. So if we can focus instead on this holistic thing where we take um, everything into account with our diet or exercise, most importantly, our mindset and, and focus on me time, then it's just going to pay us off in ways we cannot begin to imagine. Absolutely. And would you have time for one more question that came up? Sure. Absolutely. And it's the concept of quality versus quantity of sleep. I yeah. imagine that when we you know, focus on the, the topic of sleep, people are thinking, okay, how much sleep should I get rightly? Like mm -hmm. what's the best? 
and when should I sleep? What, when should I go to bed? When should I wake up? Yeah. What, what do you have to suggest? What does the research show? It's yeah, it's a really good question too. So people, the best time for them to go to sleep, the, the best way in my opinion to find out is to, to do a genetic test, but you also over the course of your life, you probably have a good idea if you're more of a morning person or if you're more of a late night person and you can do self-assessment quizzes. So there's one called the power of now quiz. You can just type that into Google and there's four different animal signs that you can allocate to, which, which is good. I mean, I've done the test multiple times, it sometimes gives different answers, but it's a really good way for you to self-assess yourself because it's one part's getting subjective. The other part is getting objective and seeing what the data about yourself says. Um, but when it comes to sleep, um, what you really want to focus on is, 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 is that morning routine or that evening routine. So you can get to bed in, in the most, um, uh, in the deepest way possible. So you can get to sleep within what I say, 15 minutes or less, not wake up in the middle of the night, then wake up without the need for you to take, um, any coffee. So this is where it's really important where sleep quality comes into the mix instead of quantity, um, which is the hours of sleep that you're getting throughout the night, because especially high performers and CEOs, sometimes they just don't have a lot of hours to sleep. I mean, some of them routinely have to work until midnight and they have to get up at 6 a.m. in the morning. How do you tell them you should be sleeping eight hours? They just don't have the time. So it's all about maximizing those hours that they do have to sleep to make them deeper, more restorative. So they do wake up feeling a lot more refreshed. And what's really interesting too, is people think they only need eight hours of sleep, but you actually show them if we optimize their sleep, they only needed six hours. Now we just freed up two hours in their day and multiply that over 365. Um, they have how much more free time during the year to do whatever they want to do. Now you add this over decades. Um, I mean, you can just possibly begin to imagine what happens with all that. Um, but one last thing I wanted to leave was is in the, it's a little bit more complex, but to simplify it, think about our sleep in two different phases. So the very first phase is sleep heals our body. So it's a lot of our muscle and everything like that. The second phase of our sleep is our mind. This is where we really reach those deeper forms of sleep and our body uh, brings out all the toxins and it really um, restores um, our mind. It consolidates our memories from the day before of things that we learned. And what happens is if people are waking up at, let's say three or four in the morning, yes, their physical body is healed, but they haven't given their, their actual mind a chance to heal, especially if they can't get back to sleep. And the second phase of their sleep is just, it's up and down, it's light sleep. So they're not waking up fully restored mentally, which again, leads to you having brain fog, not being as concise and that, that manifests in other things like we talked about. So keeping that in mind is, is if people think they can just wake up the moment I get back to sleep, it's actually impacting you a lot, um, sometimes worse than you realize. So if you take control of that, you'll see huge differences. Well, thank you again, Riley, uh, just beautiful explanations of simple things that many of us intuitively know, or we've practiced in the past and lost our way. Um, things that we can apply right away to sleep better, feel better for many, many years to come. How yeah. can people learn even more about you, the various uh, assessments that you do, like the genetic ones that you mentioned, yeah. and your programs? Yeah, they can visit uh, pretty easy. They just go www.thesleepconsultant.com. Um, I have everything inside of there. People can schedule a free sleep assessment. Um, is what I say. And we just take a one-on-one, -on -one, I listen to you, what your current struggles are, or maybe what you're looking to optimize. Um, and sometimes people just walk away with free advice. That's all they need. They need a couple of different things. It's really just leaving an impact for people. Um, but if they want to get deeper with, with the lab testing and everything else, they definitely can do that too. And they can see results pretty fast sometimes when they, when they know what their biology is actually telling them to do. It's just a matter of how do you find that out? So that's where they come in. Well, thank you. Really, this is such an important topic. Um, My pleasure. So grateful for your time and expertise. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I'm excited for people to get onto your website, uh, really take advantage of all those beautiful resources that you've created, and of course, yeah. to engage with you if they want a deeper dive. Absolutely, for sure. And when they go there, there'll be a free opt-in that they can get a free sleep questionnaire assessment, and they can actually grade themselves and see where are they maybe falling short? What are things about the sleep that they might know things that they don't know that, that they're missing out on inside of there too. I have a very, a free, um, sleep master class course and a guided meditation 
that they can use prior to going to sleep as well. So awesome. Thank you again, Riley. This was absolute joy. My pleasure, Baird.